Hello, everybody. First of all, I should say hi to everyone. I'm talking to you from upstate New York today. Um, and I'm honored to introduce one of my old friends. Uh, whom, when I say old friends, I mean, when we were younger, we were the same age. I don't know what happened that he got older and I didn't somehow. But um, Saeed, uh, Saeed Nuri was born in Tehran. He received his BA and MA both from Tehran and left Tehran for Paris uh, to study um, in the field. And there in Paris for a couple of years he stayed and he studied with the giants of the field. Uh, hopefully I'm correct in pronouncing the names as Nicole Brunner and Brunez. Jean. Yeah, Brunez and Jean Douache, or Jean Douche. Douche. Thank you, Saeed. And um, Saeed primarily is interested in history and understanding of the Iranian cinema, particularly before the revolution of 1979. However, he has done a lot of work um, on um, issues related to cinema and movie and um, related to after the revolution. He has numerous articles. He has 17 uh, documentary films, short films, and hopefully we will be able to show one of his films um, here one day at Code Pink. And um, uh, he's here. In the, I really appreciate, Saeedjan, um, you accepted my invitation to Thank come you. and help us to understand this film. And based on Thank itself, you for inviting and based on the culture and history and the cinema of Iran. So um, people who are here uh, and are joining us in this call uh, mostly have um, seen the film before and today we are going to just talk about the film. I will start with my own, so I, I have this privilege to start with my own question. and understand. As it's recording, I, I, I would like to mention that it's about the salesman by Asghar Farhadi. Yeah. We are talking about yeah. this movie. Yes. And we'll so my, yeah, um, Salesman by Asghar Farhadi, and it was, um, it was actually nominated for many prize internationally and got the best actor prize, I guess, for Shahab Husseini, the yes. um, man. And the screenplay. Yeah, and the screenplay got the prize, so that's good. And, and the Cannes um, Film Festival. Yes, in, in France, I guess, in the Cannes Film. And, um, so it, it was appraised, the film, and it's very, many foreign, actually, audience were really, they really liked it. And I personally, as an, uh, with my Iranian-American lens, I also love the film. But I always, when I watch something from Iran, something cultural, I always think how um, people who don't know much about Iran, they perceive this um, film or their, you know, this story and everything. So it, there are a couple of things that I wanted to just start this conversation with, Said John. One is um, some parts of the film, it's very cultural. For instance, when the teacher shows the film uh, in his classroom, we know they are talking about a film, Cow, which was really famous at the beginning of the revolution, got many prizes in Iran. Um, how um, this film, Cow, is related to the whole movie and do American or non-Iranian um, um, audience can see some relationship between the film and also the, um, the film Cow that it shows at the beginning. Of course, the teacher has some um, very brief conversation. The student asks how a person can be a cow and the teacher said, um, Gradually. Throughout the years, gradually, and throughout the years can this happen. Or somewhere in the film, it relates to the city, and the guy said, this, this city is ruined, this building is ruined. And um, the, the other guy says, this city or this building have been ruined many times and just stood up again. So we who knew Tehran historically, we understand that, but I always think about it, where in the film, a non-Iranian um, audience can connect these um, small um, points. Details or, together, okay. Or it is, is it 
important at all if they get these small parts or not. Uh, so let know, us we, start we, with uh, this. Mm -hmm. We have a story that talks about the reputation, privacy, security, you know, and relation between a couple. And we have some subtexts that are related to Iranian culture. And there are more local, let's say. Uh, and that's what the points that you mentioned. You know, for example, when you say the, the movie Cow, uh, which was made before the revolution, was the maybe one of the major films that was approved of the revolution. So it was an example, you know, for Iranian cinema after the revolution to make a movie, you know, like the films like Cow. It's about the peasants, you know, the people who live in a village, you know, and a cow that feeds people. But here in this movie, he's talking about, uh, mostly he's talking about writer, the author of the movie who had written the screenplay and it has been adapted from a short story, you know, and his name is Saidi. Saidi was a leftist uh, and an opposition to Shah's regime, you know, who wrote screenplays, uh, plays for the theater, and short stories before the revolution. And there are about four or five films made of his stories before the revolution, you know. And it's, uh, you know, when I saw the movie today, I saw in parallel there is an uh, an American author, Arthur Miller, in the movie, and the salesman, the play, and the, the theater that they are playing, and Saidi as an Iranian author, you know, which is represented in the classroom, you know, and the Arthur Miller, which is represented in a theater hall, you know. In parallel, you can see and you can compare in Saidi's uh, <clears throat> story of the cow, women do not have a major role, but in the salesman of Arthur Miller, you know, there is a whore in the center of the play. And that's where you see a woman getting out of the bathroom with a manto, you know, where, who is covered completely, but she says, I'm naked, how could I get out of the mm -hmm. house uh, undressed? You are talking you know, about the theater, the theater, start, this theater yes, scene yes, that yes, we saw yes, in yes. the film. And they start to laugh. Mm -hmm. Here, Askar Farhadi, I think, wants to talk about censorship, you know, and to say, we cannot show a woman naked. We cannot show a woman undressed. And that's why if you see the woman which plays in my film uh, is with this scarf all the time. It's the censorship that says that she must wear, you know, like this uh, in, in, his, in her own house, you know? And that's why uh, Saidi was censored before the revolution, you know? And after the revolution, you know, we have women who cannot show themselves as they are, and they have to, you know, uh, accept and uh, obey the law that tells them, you know, how to cover themselves for the movies. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So basically, you are saying some of these scenes that we saw, for example, in the theater, it was for making it clear for the non-Iranian audience that exactly. we have to deal with some of the rules and regulations of making exactly. the film. Exactly, exactly, of showing, uh, you know, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another very interesting part, going back to this also, is what I saw as a woman myself, that in the film, in this story, a woman's body was attacked, but because of, you know, she was ashamed or she didn't want to talk about it, 
she didn't want to go and report it to the police. Mm -hmm. And we I saw a man who is mm -hmm. frustrated and trying to mm -hmm. find a way to defend his wife or his or the body of another woman. I, these are some complication, I guess, to me at least. As a you know, uh, you know, uh, here in our culture, uh, there have there has always been something named reputation what we say in iranian aberu you know mm -hmm. reputation and you know it's it's a taboo to talk about what happened to your body as a woman you know and th that's why the woman says that he she doesn't want to express or recite what happened to her in front of a police mm -hmm. you know or mm -hmm. when his husband says that some of the neighbors uh, took you out of the bathroom. He wants to know who he was, if he was a man or he was a woman. But mm -hmm. unfortunately for her, it has been a man taking her out of the bathroom. And she insists on leaving these, this apartment because she thinks that somebody has seen her body naked mm -hmm. in the bathroom mm -hmm. when uh, she was not, you know, awake. Mm -hmm. And that's, these are the, the details that women, you know, the, the shame, I, I don't say the shame, that they, they, the protection maybe. It's the protection that an Iranian woman is educated, you know, to, to have uh, in her life. And I don't know, uh, if some are against or some are for these kind of education that mothers, you know, transfer to their daughters, you know, and, so and you see that, that this is the man who wants to defend her woman and he wants to find out what happened when he's in the staircase and one of the neighbors is passing by and says that Mr. X took your uh, wife out of the bathroom. He's, he's, he gazes the woman and uh, tries to digest what happened to her wife, but he cannot. You know, but the woman can exactly switch off the subject after a while, you know, mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. passing by the, the, the harassment, the, the mental harassment that she cannot go to the bathroom anymore. She cannot stay alone at home anymore. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, she tries to cook again. She tries to find herself up, you know, because she sees that she's losing her points. He, she, mm -hmm. he, she's losing her, her role in the theater, you know, and mm -hmm. she has to uh, resist against this and switch it off, you know, and let it be archived, unsolved. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's, that's, that's the education, you know, that's the mm -hmm. education, the Iranian education to the women. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned before we start this call, you mentioned that you saw the film again today. Yes, and yes. you were so- And it was so heavy for me. It mm -hmm. took a lot of energy of me because, you know, as you know, I'm working uh, and studying the Iranian film history before the revolution. And we have 47 years of making movies before the revolution. It started, fiction filmmaking started in Iran from 1932. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, after, uh, uh, by the revolution in 1979, we had uh, more than 1,200 fiction films made, you know, in these 50 years. Yeah. And when I study these movies, comparing to what I will see and I see these days in Iranian movies, I see that Iranian life is uh, much more complicated than before, before Today. the revolution, I mean, mm -hmm. yes. People were very naive, very simple, and the social trust 
was very high. Everybody trusted everybody else and they made friends very, very easily. But now you see that they tr even the husband tries to hide some things from his wife. You know, when he finds the, 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 the truck of the man who wanted to come into the house, he brings it to the parking and doesn't say anything to his wife, his wife you know? Mm -hmm. Everybody is surprised. Uh, everybody is surprised by the information that, that the others are conveying with themselves and don't talk about it. You know, Bobak, the, the character that gives them the apartment, he doesn't talk about the past mm -hmm. and all who, who lived in this apartment before and what mm -hmm. happened, you mm -hmm. know? And mm -hmm. everybody is surprised because they try to hide from each other the information that can prevent the catastrophe, mm -hmm. the horrible events. Yeah. And that's the Iranian life today, you know? We, we live with the secrets because uh, we think individually, I'm talking, individually, I think if I hide so many information from my friends or my wife or uh, the people who live around me, I will be in security, mm. which was mm -hmm. not, this is not what we see in Iranian movies before the revolution. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knows everything about mm. uh, the one who it, is living with. Yeah. I guess for that, in, in my perspective, there are many probably issues. So of course, revolution, war, um, um, like, or also, you know, international intervening in, in Iran, in domestic issues in Iran, along as, you know, also the um, population. And Tehran then probably had exactly. three, four million population and yes. today has 12, 15 million. So and the, there is a, at the end of 50s, <clears throat> we had, at the end of 50s, we had about 2 million Iranians living in Tehran. Uh, by the revolution, we had four million and a half. Mm -hmm. And today we have 12 million people living in this city. Yeah. And when in the movie they say we have to ruin this city and build it again, it's mm -hmm. because of the compression, you know, the compact of the population mm -hmm. that we have in this city. Uh, mm -hmm. They all come to Tehran, you know, to live. Uh, a better life, they, they immigrate, even these two uh, youngsters, these two, uh, <clears throat> these couple, you know, they have come from a province. I saw the movie for the first time in Cannes Film Festival 2016. And now today when I saw the movie, I saw that three minutes of the film has been cut, has been mm -hmm. taken out of the movie. And it was a sequence that it was the second sequence of the, of the movie when mm -hmm. they are obliged, you know, to <clears throat> evacuate the building. They go somewhere, you know, in an agent uh, for Maskan um, uh, in an agent for for, find, for, for, for for finding yes, to for, for finding another apartment, and they do not have enough money, and they say that their parents parents live in the provinces. You know, they mm -hmm. have come for a better life in yeah. Tehran, but such uh, horrible things can happen in a cosmopolitan that nobody knows nobody else. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I, 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 have to, I have to explain you something that existed before the revolution and does not exist today. We had neighborhoods before the revolution. Mm -hmm. Neighborhoods mean, mean meant that when we were walking in the street, everybody says hello no, to can. everybody else and everybody knows everybody by the name and by the first name, mm -hmm. by the family name and the first name. And everybody knew that this is the girl of Mr. X, so you answer, know? Yeah. But, but <laughs> after the revolution, because of the huge, tall, scared, uh, uh, skyscrapers and the uh, you know uh, towers you know we have we have the neighbors that we don't know you know mm -hmm. we have a, a 
a character in this movie named Ahu. We don't see her, mm -hmm. but we see the consequences of her yeah. lifestyle and its effect, its effect to, to the couple's life. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, to the, so, to the new ones who come to mm -hmm. this house. Mm -hmm. But now we don't you are see talking her. About yeah, exactly. So we don't we don't see her, but now you are talking about Ahu. Um, I want to bring um, a question that one of our mm -hmm. viewers is asked. It says, "Why in many um, of these um, occasions, I mean, specifically on Mr. Farhadi's films, um, he's referring to, is um, mostly are the middle class that we see." and in this one also and how come most people who understand things and in these dilemmas they are middle class mm, mm -hmm. do you think is that something to consider of course you know they are educated in theater the the man you know uh, teaches in a high school so he is in the middle class of the society but uh, who is not no but uh, who know no, we don't know, we, we know the ambitious things about Ahu and it's, it's vague. We don't know who she is. Everybody says that she has had complicated <clears throat> relations, but we don't see her, you know, to, to judge her by the appearance of how she uh, is, uh, you know, how she uh, wears, you know, uh, what he says, what she says, you know, and how she lives, her lifestyle is unknown to us, you know, but everybody has some uh, guess, you know, about mm -hmm. her. They, they try to judge her, you know, mm -hmm. and afterwards you see that she is maybe a victim that, the girl who plays mm -hmm. the role of a prostitute mm -hmm. in the theater, you know, is a mirror character that mm -hmm. you can see. Uh -oh. there is, she is an independent woman, you know, wearing the red, you know, manto, uh, and she has a, a boy of three, four year old, and we don't know anything about her mm -hmm. either her personal life, but we know that she is in, in a complicated situation too. You know, uh, she is Ahu too. She is another mm -hmm. Ahu. She is, uh, Ahu is the future of this girl, maybe. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can see such things because there are, there are two parallel stories. Mm -hmm. One, is going on in the theater and mm -hmm. one is in the real world which is located in tehran yeah. yes mm -hmm. exactly interesting um i have another question here mm -hmm. that what is now you are talking about the theater someone asked what is the role of the theater in the iranian culture very important very important since 150 years ago theater always had a great role in iranian history and iranian in uh, among iranian intellectuals i have to tell you that before the coup d'etat of 1953 in lalazar a place in the just Main in theater. the center of tehran yes there were more than 15 theaters and they were all leftists and communists. They had come from France, they had come from Russia, and they tried to represent the, the intellectual theater mixed with the politics. Excuse me, and when you say they came from France and Russia, do you mean yeah. the stories, the plays, or no, the no, no, the ones, the ones they, they were educated in France. Oh, the Iranians, they had, who, yeah, yes, they had in. studied theater in France mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. had studied theater in Russia. You know, mm -hmm. they were Stanislavski's students, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, 
from the school of Stanislavski, they were graduated and they were all politicians, you know, mm -hmm. bec it's, that's why after the coup d'etat of 1953, you know, they banned all the serious theaters, they mm -hmm. uh, put them in jail for some years and they repented and they came out and they became the, the next generation of the translators in Iranian culture. And they started to translate the political or the mm. contemporary uh, novels, you know, from English, from Russian to Iranian language, to Persian, to mm -hmm. Farsi. Interesting. So yes, you are because, saying- And that's why theater has always been a part of intellectualism in Iran. Um, interesting. Okay. And so and, 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 and I have to mention that I knew, I knew you in the theater. We were yeah. in the same play, A Midsummer yeah. Night's Dream, 22 okay. years ago. And it was considered political because yeah. at, when everybody searched for the grief days, we were representing a comedy. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. reciting a comedy. We tried mm -hmm. to give joy to the people. Mm -hmm. So you are saying the uh, language of theater in general in Iran has mm -hmm. been the language of politics. So people exactly. talk about exactly. their... Mm -hmm. Before, mm -hmm. exactly. But, uh, especially before the coup d'etat of 1953. Yeah. And afterwards, it's, it's transferred, transformed and transferred to the poetry, contemporary poetry, mm -hmm. and then to the literature, and mm -hmm. then to the cinema, you know? You mean the political language? First yes, the, poli the, the intellectuals, mm -hmm. yes, the intellectuals immigrated mm -hmm. in another media. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But what happened to theater then uh, after 1953, the modern, you know, when the, all of yes. these activists? You know, for, for about, for about 15 years, we didn't have anything serious. Uh -huh. But afterwards, the, it was uh, an atelier, a workshop place, Kargah uh, mm -hmm. which was the Iranian national television who founded uh, a place for those who wanted to experiment theater. And that was because of the, uh, we had a, a festival in Shiraz mm -hmm. named the Festival of Arts, Jashne mm -hmm. Shiraz. Mm -hmm. And that's where the great uh, theatrical groups like mm -hmm. uh, Yerzy Grotowski, Peter Brook, and uh, others so from the were West, invited. Uh, yes, they yeah. were invited to Iran. And in parallel, Iranians started to experiment the theater again, but mm -hmm. it was not political. Uh -huh. uh, they, they were experimenting the language of theater, you know, as a media of uh, expression, but uh, it was not as political <clears throat> as it was because, yeah. uh, you know, we, we are a neighbor to the Russia and at that time, communism was a danger for Iranian government, you know, <laughs> considered as a danger. So that was why Whoever wanted to be an opposition became <coughs> communist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. There are a couple of questions about the role of women and men. And mm -hmm. like, for instance, one question is, um, was it very difficult for the woman to talk to her husband because she was fearful of him? Or what do you think was no, happening? No, 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 I, I <laughs> talked about the education. You know, it's not the fear. You know, it's a part of uh, novelty in Iranian mm -hmm. culture to mm -hmm. keep, to reserve what is inside you as a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, you see this, this is a, a it's not the, uh, the, the modern education. It's a custom, you know, yeah. traditional education Culture, of basically. Iranian, Iranian women, you know, and no, she's, she's not 
uh, afraid of uh, her <coughs> husband, but she does not want to talk about it. You know, about her because, body. Yes, about her body, and she does not want either to remember. You know, mm -hmm. she doesn't want to remember. When she starts to recite, you know, she's uh, exactly, uh, completely, you know, um, bulversed, uh, you know, set up. She, she, she's, she's upset when she talks about it. It's about her education because she's not from Tehran. You have to know that she comes from the provinces. Mm -hmm. you know, and what that, makes the difference? The difference is the, the difference between modernity and the tradition. You know, the tradition... So in uh, the provinces, people are more traditional than... Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> and the education is the education that your mother transfers to you. But mm -hmm. in the huge cities that you learn everything in the streets, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you are under the uh, verbal violence, you know, mm -hmm. the oral yeah. violence. Yeah. yeah. First yeah. of all, everybody tries to say some <coughs> words to you and then they try to touch you, to catch you. And you start to defend yourself after a while, you know, because you see, you cannot be so... Uh, you know, silent about it. But mm -hmm. when you come from the provinces, it's a shame to talk about it. That's mm -hmm. the difference of the culture of cosmopolitan. Bigger city or... Yes. Or probably this provinces. is kind of global in many places. In the bigger cities, people exactly. are more open to them. Yeah. Yes. But again, there is another question, almost the same um, a subject area that... Um, the gender role in Iranian society, mm -hmm. how you can define it and what do you say about that? I'm very proud to say that the future belongs to women in Iran. And uh, yes. everybody says the next revolution will be the revolution of women. Mm -hmm. You know, not, you in the, no, not, not in the uh, traditional way of revolution. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they have started to change things from the house by working on their parents, on their brothers, to change their views, their point of views, their minds, you know, by wearing what, how they want to wear in their houses, you mm -hmm. know, by saying what they desire to say, mm -hmm. by studying the disciplines that they like to follow, mm -hmm. you know, and nobody can prevent them of uh, the participating in the society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on um, art and politics? And, and the new, you, you have to know that the new generation of men, for example, me, uh, mm -hmm. we do give much more liberty to our women that my father gave to my mother, mm -hmm. you know? So, because they, they, I, you have to know that the men are not the same that they were, for example, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Men mm -hmm. have changed too. And that's why I say women, you know, they can, they can defend themselves by conversation, you know, by mm -hmm. talking about their problems. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, for example, 40 years ago, I saw people talking by violence. The bodies talked by violence to each other. And even in this movie, you see that when two men at the end, at the ending sequence of the movie, when mm -hmm. two men are talking about a violence against a woman, they try to keep calm and talk about it. You know, and they talk about it. But if it was before the revolution, one would take out a knife and put it in the body of the, yeah. you know, the, 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 body, the, the body of the person who had violated his woman, uh -huh. his Interesting. wife. Interesting. So basically, I hear that you are talking about the maturity of a nation. Exactly. Um, exactly. Collective maturity. A, de a democracy, an informal democracy through conversation. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And the, the, the main subject of Asghar Farhadi's, the main topic of Asghar Farhadi's movies is, you know, is talking to each other mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of reacting with your bodies or your manner, try to talk. That's why you will see more than 2,000 subtitles, you know, in each movie of Asghar Farhadi. They talk too much. Yeah. Oh, so there are a lot you know? of conversations. In yes, the there oh, are a lot of conversations. Sometimes uh, they are uh, bavarding, you know, they are trying to, uh, to, to, to represent the logic that they are living with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we get connected to these uh, characters based on their logics and how they... Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, this is the maturity, the, 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 the evolution of mm -hmm. the society, you know. They tr everybody tries to communicate through the exact words. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. So, but you say this is in general Asghar Farhadi's work, like in other yes. movies of him, we see like yes, yes. about Ali or yes, separation. separation or yes, exactly, oh, oh, okay. exactly. And that's why when we when we talk about the middle class of the society, middle class of the society are normally uh, the people who are educated enough to talk about their issues, mm -hmm. you know, not to react and let us mm -hmm. discover what he wanted to say. They say it directly, mm -hmm. directly, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. with the words, they pronounce it. So you say this happens mostly among educated people or middle class people. But yes, we see more violence we, among on, like the economically yes, more poor. Yes, uh -huh. we don't yes. see this. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. In proportion, you know, uh, we 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 have more than forty million people who are educated from the universities, mm -hmm. which was uh, very rare before the revolution you mm -hmm. know they did not mm -hmm. people did not have access to the universities mm -hmm. easily but mm -hmm. after the revolution by the azad university which was founded in each little city you know mm -hmm. it was a, an opportunity for the people to go and be educated you know and we we must not neglect the role of the virtual world and the mm -hmm. internet which has spread out of the country and everybody knows so many things and the satellites you know there are more than 2000 satellite channels in the houses so everybody can uh, you know can can uh, can follow what he desires yeah, it, it, you are talking about how it's easier for people to have connection with the outside exactly. world. And basically we are living another period of time, another yeah. era. Yeah. We are in the 21st century and there are some things that uh, you cannot prevent. I'm sitting in my apartment, you know, talking to you in the States uh, from mm -hmm. Tehran. It was not possible 20 years of ago. Course. To, okay. to have a video talk like this. Yeah, of course. So Saijan, we have um, almost 20 minutes and I want to give this 20 minutes to you. Um, not all of that, I, I need the <laughs> last five minutes, but I want to give it to you to see um, what did you think in general about the film itself? And are you going, you know, if we were in a different world, are you going to recommend it? to more people to watch it and why. Exactly, exactly. You recommend it to watch because it shows how human relation is uh, fragile these mm. days. And every word, every act counts in your destiny. You know, when a man says, when the, when the man who has who, who tempted, you know, to, to the, the violence, he says, I was tempted 
You know, a temptation must may result in your death mm -hmm. these days. You know, mm -hmm. that shows that the, the, the world is very, very complicated and you must be enough educated, you know, to react in, the, in, a, in a good situation and talk enough of your problem, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, try to resolve your problem by communicating to the others and these are the new ways of communication because we as the human beings are more complicated than the ones who lived on the earth before us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, today a five-year-old child can, you know, can do the things with a telephone that I can't do with a 45 mm -hmm. years old. You know, the new generation are coming and the we have to educate them well, you know, to, for peace and talk peacefully, you know, to the others and try to communicate and try to uh, have a, um, a resulting conversation to the <laughs> others mm -hmm. and try to eliminate threatening others, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to, trying to, eliminating the violence and the reacting violence, uh, reactions of violence, you know, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. our manners, in mm -hmm. our attitudes. Uh, that's why the psychology these days uh, has a great role in the movies. Mm -hmm. And if you see the movie psychologically, you know, you will see that this is a couple who are very, very ready to have a child. When you mm -hmm. see a child is a guest, you know, they treat uh, I guess give me um it is the connection is lost. So while I hope Saeed is trying to come back to the conversation. I want to announce that next week also at Code Pink, we have a um, very interesting program. Uh, it is for the um, August 23rd at 2 p.m. Uh, it is a program with the um, orchestra, chamber orchestra of Tehran. And the program basically is um, organized by Fatima Keshavarz at um, the university of, um, at the college park and uh, with her distinguished guest Behruz uh, Kamari, Kamari Tabrizi and Kosar uh, Gohari uh, and we will watch when you join us we will watch a musical collaboration between um, these groups and the, between the Solidarity Chamber Orchestra of Tehran and singers okay. from the Washington DC based opera. So it is a collaboration between Tehran and Washington DC. And hopefully we will see you here. Again, it's August 23rd uh, at 2 p.m. And um, we will um, send you further information as well as you can find more information on our website at codepink.org. So I'm glad to say and to see Saeed is back and um, we are here, Saeed John. Mm -hmm. Yes, do I you see me? Uh, yeah. Yes, and we hear you. Okay. Uh, I said what I wanted to say, is, is the <laughs> anything else? Yes, I do recommend, recommend the movie and the other Iranian movies too. You know, mm -hmm. the, the uh, Iranian culture is very vast and very, uh, how how can I explain it? It's because we don't we have right. so many yes yeah, yeah, so many tribes in Iran. You know it's a, it's like a mosaic uh, mm -hmm. culture in Iran, and uh, everywhere you can find very uh, surprising uh, reactions. You know mm -hmm. as as you know better than me, Iranian people are so receptive. You know. Uh, to the people who come to their country to visit, you know, they, 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 they help everybody 
And that's why I, I do recommend you to watch more Iranian movies, even from before re the revolution, you know, mm -hmm. that that lets you compare uh, how this society is trying to, uh, you know, develop itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so actually, um, this is a series, and uh, we are very mm -hmm. honored that you are here with us. And um, this program will be a series of um, programs that we are going to invite um, different people from different art um, industry or sections, mm -hmm. um, including movie. And um, soon, hopefully, we are going to have you again uh, to talk about your own film, uh, Women on the, from the Men's Perspective, I guess, if yes. I'm corrected the name. And then we will- Women send according more to Men to men and uh, we will send more information to our uh, members and um, friends and so we will have you uh, mm -hmm. later so um, someone because of um, you suggested right now that it is uh, it is good also to see some films um, related to before the revolution before 1979 exactly. and so exactly. what kind of films you are recommending for us to see and you actually, know, my, this is a question from uh, one of our friends here, but my personal question is, do they have subtitles, those old films? Some of them they have. For example, The mm -hmm. Cow, you, you maybe find it uh, with the English subtitles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Cow that they, they talk yeah. in this movie, in the, the Salesman, in movie. yes. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see what was happening before the revolution, the best way is to watch my film because I watched okay. more than 1,000 movies and you uh -huh. will see how women were reflected, you know, during 50 years in Iranian cinema, you know, how they were treated, how they were written, how they were directed, you know, and, and how they reacted, you know, to the situations in which they were trapped. Mm -hmm. before the revolution mm -hmm. and how they tried to 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 pass to to pass from the tradition to the modernity mm -hmm. you know which was the politics of the era mm -hmm. of, of the, the government mm -hmm. yes interesting um i it was interesting to me you choose the word trapped but I would personally, I would love to see your film and hopefully we will soon and we will announce the further information about that and date and everything to um, our members and groups. Um, I don't have any other question and I don't know I if- see there are, I see there are 12 other questions. Do you see these questions? And do you see um, if- I see the, some of them is, and I guess I, Ah, uh -huh, you have them. asked. Okay. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, mm. and but uh, is there if there is anything you want to mention about this particular movie or, um, in general, in in a very brief, <laughs> basically, um, about the um, Asghar Farhadi. So mm -hmm. it would be great. The the uh, the cinema is of Asghar Farhadi is very important for Iranian culture of these days because, you know, he has come from the theater, he knows the drama very well, and uh, he knows the Iranian mentality very well, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why, uh, but uh, I, I'm not very, very for Asghar Farhadi cinema because the violence that, are shown or reflected in the movies, you know, it agitates me. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's not from maybe his films, but in general, you know, I, I do like the peaceful, more peaceful movies, you know, mm -hmm. which try to tell you in a very uh, more subtle ways mm -hmm you know, to, to, to uh, tell their story in a very more subtle mm -hmm. ways. Uh, Astar Farhadi is very uh, fond of uh, Alfred Hitchcock, 
Mm -hmm. And as you can see in this movie, there are many um, suspicions, you know, suspension uh, mm -hmm. in his movies. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a kind of taking uh, the audience as a hostage. And mm -hmm. I don't like it, you know, uh, because I talked very much uh, of the details of his movies. I, I would like to mention that personally, Yes, uh, of course. When I see his movies, it takes a lot of energy of me. Mm. And uh, maybe instead of a little bit entertaining me, uh, after finishing the movie, I'm a little bit scared to live in my country, you know, because mm. I see the security. Uh, even you, you don't have the security even you, in your apartment. Mm -hmm. And that's not true, you know. I I think personally that's not true, oh. you know, because because I have lived in my country so many years. Uh, yeah. Yes, it can happen, but it's not general. Yes. You know, it it cannot happen generally for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. you can be you can live a peaceful life in Tehran. Mm -hmm. You can have uh, many good friends, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't need to hide so much information from the mm -hmm. others, you know. Mm -hmm. That is what his movies suggest, you know, Interesting. propose. Mm -hmm. But um, I do personally see people uh, mm -hmm. much more uh, relying. Mm -hmm. We can rely on them much more than what you will see in Asa Farhadi's movie. movies. Mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. they, they try to provoke each other in his mm -hmm. movies. You mm -hmm. know, for example, in this movie, you will see the neighbors that everybody tries to provoke the man against Ahu and against mm -hmm. the one who lived before them in this very apartment. Mm -hmm. But, but in reality... In, yes, in, in reality, people are, people are a little much much more positive mm -hmm. than this mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and that's why it, there are a little bit differences you know from what is the reality of iran it's a yeah. movie you know he wants to be tense yeah. his movie but the life is not so tense here yeah yeah interesting so i and guess that's why yeah. that's why i don't leave my country because yeah. i could I had I lived for nine years in France. I could stay there. No, mm -hmm. I prefer to come back to my country mm -hmm. and live among my people. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, so I guess um, what I hear from you um, is basically yes, this is a film, and the characteristic of any film is just exaggerate yes. something into yes. in order to you make to it interesting. Yeah. yeah, in order yes, to make it fiction. interesting story. Yeah. But at the same time, we should remember this is not the whole story of one country, yes. of one nation. Exactly. It's exactly what, you know, sometimes I have to say this. Sometimes politicians say, you know, things about Iran or about the rest of the Middle East or other places mm. and mm. try to make that mm. specific place very scary. So, but that is not the reality. Even you exactly, know, but exactly. always the very strange. Don't stories. ever listen yeah. to media. Don't ever listen <laughs> to the newspapers and what they, they try to discover the countries and the cultures by yourself. You know, exactly. Uh, Beautiful. And, yeah. You know, uh, when I see the the European films or the American movies, you know, I I fall in love to Los Angeles. Maybe in the reality, it's not as, <laughs> as well as I see it in the movies, yeah. you know? But yeah. I fall in love. I, I have a very, very, uh, you know, uh, tenderness to, to the openness of the people, American people, mm -hmm. you know? But the same openness I, I see here among the Iranian people. Yeah. As I say, they are mm -hmm. receptive. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And I saw... Exactly the same uh, manner, the same reaction uh, from the French people when I was mm -hmm. in France. Mm -hmm. I had very, very good French. It depends on us, you know. Yeah. It yeah. depends on us. When we are resentful, you know, uh, yeah. it's very, our point of view is very different uh, mm -hmm. from when we are uh, confronting the issues, you know, with, a, with an openness of a spirit. You know, yeah, 
yeah. it transfers you some somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, so um, the last question I want to ask you, um, if you could also um, um, if you could also send us a list of films that you suggest and Iranian films. And if you can tell me, this is I, I'm, my personal interest, I would like to know who is your favorite um, director? Yeah, then you said you don't like that much Asghar Farhadi's films because of the tension it has and all of mm -hmm. these, do you explain, which makes sense. But um, I wanna know who is your favorite Iranian director? Uh, it's obviously from before the revolution. Uh, okay. <laughs> Nasser Taghvai, Nasser Taghvai, oh, okay. the one who hate uncle, uncle Napoleon uh -huh. and uh, tranquility in the presence of others uh -huh. is, is one of his movies uh, that is based on the Saidi's story. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. Nasser Taghvai is uh, my favorite because mm -hmm. he knows Iran uh, the, the, the cinematographic language. Mm -hmm. I, I saw somebody has asked me if uh, I want to explore some other country and come out of Iran, which is the country? It's obviously United States of America. Mm -hmm. You have to know. I love United States of America because of uh, what he had done with the cinema, with the theater mm -hmm. and with the culture. You know, during mm -hmm. the last century, even mm -hmm. you know, mostly mm -hmm. during the last century, I mm -hmm. love uh, American movies and I love European movies. I lived some years in France, but if I want to live in Europe, I prefer to live in Paris mm -hmm. because I know there and I speak French and I have so many friends. You know, and it's majorly because of the cinematic Francaise which is the most, uh, the, the, the most wealthy, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. of the archives of the world. Of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And that's I what, see one, yes. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I see one yes, question yes. here that we didn't, yes. we didn't get the answer, is uh, someone talked about a prostitution and said, is it unusual to have a prostitute even unseen as part of a film plot in Iran? No, no. You have to know that before the revolution, majorly uh, Iranian women were shown as the girls who danced in the bars or I mean, who were after the, the revolution. And but mostly after, after the revolution, yes. But after the revolution, they were eliminated from the movies. You know, mm -hmm. it, it is not because uh, we cannot only show them in their real life. It's mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, uh, there are other ways to show the movies because the, the laws have been changed, the censorship has been changed, and uh, you have to do in a symbolic way, you know, with uh, using the metaphors, mm -hmm. you know, to say something. Mm -hmm. Even here, you see that Asghar Farhadi takes Arthur Miller as a metaphor, you know, a girl coming out of the bathroom naked, but she has everything on. That mm -hmm. shows that you cannot really show uh, what is the uh, real life of a prostitute mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's, so, it's, it's not an issue for women either because we have so many uh, female filmmakers but they, do not, but they do not try to show a prostitute you know, in their movies. I don't know if, if there is a shame to show it. They have mm -hmm. a, an inside shame and they, they are uh, maybe uh, more cautious you know, mm -hmm. to, to, be, mm -hmm. to be afraid of the judges that come afterwards, mm -hmm. maybe. It depends to the society, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you cannot show it in, uh, a, in, in an obvious way of life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. But you can refer to them as this person. Yes, but, yes. And, uh, the second road. Yeah. 
and usually it's interesting this one actually we don't have much time but i'm going to say this 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 part was i was thinking about american audience when in the movie they open the door of the uh, closet the closet door of the you know mm -hmm. prostitute woman oh, and we yes. saw ahu and we saw a couple of red shoes so i wanted to say i don't know if said if i'm wrong tell me for the iranian audience um showing red shoes or you know very those you know, colors it's, screaming you colors know, i think it's, it's 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 very nice it's a very very good question because after the revolution the colors gradually eliminated from the society mm -hmm. even if a man wears a red shirt you know everybody or a a yellow trousers everybody tries to know uh, which uh, are, are you a gay man or what is happening to you why this color <laughs> yeah. why not why not uh, for example white or black solid or yeah. yes yes or gray you know yeah. why do you want to pronounce yourself yeah. uh, through the color the color has been eliminated from the society yeah. gradually and uh, it's a pity it's it, a pity because it shows that joy has been mm -hmm. eliminated from the society mm -hmm. gradually you know but i want to actually take this word of yours to the beginning of the conversation that you mentioned if there is any revolution i mean evolution that you correctly mentioned is from the women because i was in yes. iran last time in 2018 and while growing up um i learned that i shouldn't have or shouldn't wear um, we called it the screaming colors like you know mm -hmm. red yellow mm -hmm. bright mm -hmm. colors but yes. in 2018 when i was in iran i saw younger women um, or mm. many many different from different yes. ages they all are wearing colorful outfits they are showing it outside and they are more comfortable with these colors yes, it was really it's, interesting it's it's very recent and you mm -hmm. have to know uh, i forgot what i wanted to say i guess oh. if i if i'm alone i want to say probably this is iran is going toward a very good condition yes. of yes. life itself please leave yes. iran to the iranians and let them to make any decision they want to make exactly. so any exactly. any pressure from outside will destroy this beautiful move and this beautiful evolution so exactly this is my evolution criticism. is gradual and from inside not exactly. from outside and not by force yes exactly okay perfect thank you very much said john you and have been it's perfect 2 a.m or 3 a.m at your time in tehran we it's will let 2 you know it's 33 2 30 a.m and um i wish you the best so we will have you soon and we will announce it thank in you. our website and with further emails to our uh, friends and allies at the code pink and hopefully we will have you soon again with your film your own film yes yes thank you it's it will be an thank honor you. You know, you will have an ontology of Iranian history, uh, contemporary film. history through my film, because Beautiful. I'm fond of history. You know, you can see more than uh, 122 excerpts from uh, the movies Iran. made before the revolution, you know, to how they directed, how they, uh, you know, were uh, dressed before the yeah, revolution, how beautiful. they talked before the revolution beautiful. and uh, how they reacted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We cannot wait. Thank you very much. Love you Merci all Saijan. and thank you we for inviting you. me. <laughs> thank you. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. See you Kodafiz. soon. Bye. Kodafiz. Kodafiz.